Number eight then from the 2013 Higher Maths Paper 2, a double angle equation. Now it's just sine 2x, there's only one form of that. So at first glance it might seem that this is going to be an easy one, but it's still six marks. But this cos squared x is a bit of a spanner in the works. So what would happen? Well, I've only got one choice. I have to make the x's the same. So it's this double x that's going to change to a single x. So I check up the front for that. There's only one form. It has to be 2 sine x cos x. And that side becomes 2 cos squared x. Now, it's not a quadratic that you're going to factorise. But you're still going to take it to one side and factorise it by looking for common factors. Because I can see them there. So I'll take it all over to one side. I've got 2 cos squared x. I'm actually taking it to this side, reading it backwards, rather than having a negative at the front. 2 cos squared x minus 2 sin x cos x. So far, so good. Because I've got everything to one side equal to 0, so I can factorise it usefully. There's a common factor. There are two common factors. There's a number and a cosine. So I'll take out the 2 and I'll take out the cos. Happy so far. That'll leave me a cos x for the first term, but then it leaves me a sin x for the second term. And then you might have been startled when you got that, because you don't see that quite so often in these questions. But you just proceed as normal. If this factorisation is meant to come to zero, then either of these factors must equal zero. So just keep on going. So either cos x will equal zero, or cos x minus sin x will equal zero. So forgetting that one just now, proceeding with this, that's just the same as cos x equals zero, which is maybe what I should have just written down straight away. And you get these answers directly from the graph. You consider the graph of cos x, where I put it, which looks like this. When is the graph at zero? Here and here. 90 to 70, pi up and 2, and 3 pi up and 2, because it's in radians. So the solution for this part is x equals pi up and 2, and x equals 3 pi up and 2. So that wasn't too bad. Now this part, how do you deal with this? Well, you could say, let's just pop that over. Cos x has to be the same as sine x, and you know they're the same at 45. But they'll be the same somewhere else as well. If I put the sine graph on top of this, the sine x graph it's the same as the cos x graph in two places, so there's going to be two solutions. And you probably know that one anyway. You know they're both the same at 45. But strictly speaking, instead of just doing that, you could rearrange this one more time. Take the cos x across and divide. Dividing both sides by cos x would give me, I'm just going to write this side first now, would give me sin x over cos x equals 1. Dividing both sides by cos x, taking the cos x across and dividing, and that will leave just a 1 here. Which means what I'm going to solve instead is tan x equals 1. And you know the answer for that. Now, it's tan x equals, and it's positive 1, all sine tan cos. So I'm either going to have my tangent angle here, or the tangent angle is going to be all the way around to here. And you already know that the tangent of 1 came from 45 degrees. That's one of the ones, you know, straight away, like sine x, sine of 30 is a half. So I know my two answers are going to be, for this, are going to be 45 degrees, put a wee note there, which is pi up and 4, or the one over here with the pi up and 4 beyond the 180, beyond the pi, so that's another 4 fourths, if you like, or 5 pi up and 4. Putting it all together, in numerical order, pi up and 4, that'll work, pi up and 2, That'll do 2. 5 pi upon 4 comes before this. 5 pi upon 4. And then 3 pi upon 2. And that's all there was to it. There.